My 30-day challenge with Samsung's flagship device, the Galaxy S4, is complete, and I bet you're wondering, am I going to keep it or am I going to ditch it for something else? I'm Aaron Baker from PhoneDog.com, and I'll tell you just that after the break. 30 days with the Galaxy S4 is done and in the books, and this, in a lot of ways, is the flagship 30-day challenge of the year, at least based on sales numbers. This is an exceptionally popular device, and I bet what you're wondering is, am I going to keep this device for longer than 30 days? Is it going to be my daily driver? Well, before I tell you that, let me tell you a little bit about the final days with the device and how I've used my devices in the past. I've carried Samsung devices for some time prior to this device, and obviously when I wasn't on a 30-day challenge, I was carrying the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. I carried it for about six months. Before that, I carried the Galaxy S3 for about six months. Before that, my daily driver was an iPhone. So, at least in my personal life, for the past year or so, when I'm not on a 30-day challenge, a Samsung device has been my go-to phone for quite some time. Galaxy S4 brings a lot to like for a lot of people. If you're coming from Galaxy S3 or Galaxy Note 2, this could be in a lot of ways a great device for you. And what it has, it brings kind of the specifications up into current days. Quad-core processor that's a 1.9 gigahertz Snapdragon 600 CPU, a 5-inch 1080p HD display here. You've got a 13 megapixel camera on the back, so improvements all around, and not just in the hardware, but in the software as well. You've got some great new features on Samsung's TouchWiz. You've got Air Gesture, Air View, and I'll go through just really quickly and highlight some of those. Of course, you've got your S-Beam stuff that you remember from the Galaxy S3 and the Note 2, but then you've got some amazing stuff down here. Air View, motions and gestures, so I've got Smart Screen as well, Stay, Rotation. This thing is packed to the gills full of features. But just to recap some of the issues I had in 30 days with this device, those features come at a cost, and that is built-in storage. And the fact that when those features are installed, there's not a whole lot of storage left. And that's a challenge for a lot of people. 9.62 gigabytes of available space out of the box. And after moving all my pictures and my videos over to the SD card, as you can see right here, I still only have a little bit of space left on the device. So for a lot of people, myself included, who I wouldn't consider to be, I don't certainly don't consider myself to be a spec hog or any sort of you know storage hog by any stretch of the imagination. I like my pictures, don't really listen to a lot of music outside of the music I have on the phone, and that's about 200 songs. Don't really hog the hard drive space, if you will. And even for me, it's been a challenge to stick to 16 gigabytes of internal storage on this device. Now you do have the micro SD card slot. I have a micro SD card in it. That said, you can only store certain stuff on the micro SD card, and I find it to be slow in a lot of ways. When you go from gallery into the images themselves, there's a lag there. And you also see lag system-wide. This is something I've really struggled with in the past 30 days. I did not see this on the Galaxy S3. Certainly didn't see it on the Note 2 with the quad-core Exynos processor. Very fast device all around. I've seen lag from time to time on the US variants of the Galaxy S4. And using it as my daily driver with all my messages installed and photos, I just see it all too often to be a high-end, Pretty expensive when you think about it. Device for $200, I expect this device to be exceptionally fast, and there is no reason that with a quad-core 1.9 gigahertz processor, two gigs of RAM, this thing can't zip through anything that I throw at it. This is up against the HTC One, and in a lot of ways, at least in the lag department, the HTC One wins. So recap, I'll tell you what I like about the Galaxy S4. The pros for me here, fantastic, or at least very good battery life. 2,600 milliamp hour battery, it's removable, and not only that, it's a nice little balance between the Galaxy S3, 2,100 milliamp hours, and the Note 2, which had a 3,100 milliamp hour battery. It's sandwiched right in the middle, both literally, in terms of size itself, and literally, as well, or I should say literally and figuratively, literally in the size, figuratively in the amount of time that it stays charged. I get a full day out of this, and usually I can make it into day two before this device needs a recharge. So I can easily go through a trade show or a series of meetings. I'm in LA on Friday for meetings, and I wouldn't have to worry about taking this device and using it all day on a trip. The challenge with the HTC One, for example, just comparing it to its nearest Android counterpart, it is a non-removable battery, and it's a smaller battery. It's 2,300 milliamp hours. So in terms of battery life, I have had less of a success result on the HTC One. The win here for me, great battery life, a beautiful five inch display. Five inches for me, the perfect sweet spot. 4.7, a little bit too small. 5.5, too big in the pocket. Just for my personal use, I like having a five inch display and this is why I loved the Droid DNA as well. So that five inches spot, great for me. Love the camera on this phone as well. 13 megapixel camera, a ton of options on this device, a ton of abilities to do cool things with the camera and it continues over 
into the Galaxy S4. We saw some of those with the Galaxy S3. It moves over into the Galaxy S4. The downsides to this device, internal storage space, and not just that, you can make the argument that you can get a micro SD card or that you can get a bigger version. Well, the fact is the bigger version isn't available at every US carrier, so that kind of nixes that argument for a lot of people. Number two, SD card, great option, and Samsung will tell you that. Quite a few of the vendors will tell you that. Great option, I'm not dissing an SD card, but what you have to remember is it can only store music and pictures in a lot of cases, no games, no applications. So you're still restricted in some ways with your available storage space. Big issue there with the storage space and the lag. The lag ultimately for me is the killer. And despite having this awesome high-end device that does so much, it frustrates me when I see lag on a phone that's this high quality or supposed to be this high quality and is packed to the gills with some great specifications. Am I gonna carry the device after 30 days? Drum roll please, it is looking like I'm not going to carry this device. I am planning on moving to the HTC One after finishing my challenge, which is already over with the Samsung Galaxy S4. At some point in the near future, I plan on going with the HTC One, but before I do that, I'm picking up another 30-day challenge, and I'm going to leave it to you to guess which phone I'm going to carry for the next 30 days. I've already done the One, so it's got to be something else, but most likely when I finish the next 30-day challenge and I'm off of the 30-day challenges, the HTC One will be my daily driver. I much prefer TouchWiz to Sense5. I think TouchWiz is really well fleshed out in a lot of ways. It works well with stock Android or with it you know, as an Android overlay, if you will, a user experience. That said, I can't stand the lag on the Galaxy S4. And until that's fixed, I really struggle to use this as my daily device, despite the fact that it's got some exceptional features and some exceptional hardware packed into a tiny little area here. Keep it locked on PhoneDog.com for continuing coverage. I'll announce the next 30-day challenge tomorrow on the YouTube channel and on the site at PhoneDog.com, so stay tuned there. Hit me up on Twitter with questions, PhoneDog underscore Aaron. I'm on Facebook as well, Facebook.com slash Hi Aaron Baker, and on Google Plus at gplus.to slash PhoneDog. Thanks for watching. Thanks for staying tuned for this 30-day challenge, and stay tuned for the next 30-day challenge tomorrow on YouTube. I'll see you next time.